Hi guys. Hi friends. I am here to talk with neuroscientist and two times TEDx speaker Abhishek Dhawan on the neuroscience of breastfeeding. Now I am coming live after a long time because uh, I was looking for some interesting subjects and this subject really caught my attention. Now we all know breast milk is liquid gold, but have we ever thought why and how it functions? Okay, so Abhishek is here. let him do the talking. Hi, Mom Avengers. Hi, hi everyone. I'm waiting for Abhishek to join in. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, hello. Hi, so good to have hi. you here. Yeah, same here. And thank you for coming on my live. It's a really interesting topic. And uh, as a person who advocates for breastfeeding, this really, really interests me, and I want to know more about it. Thank you for coming and shedding light on the topic. Yeah, sure. Actually, it is my pleasure to make people aware about how brain gets involved and how basically the neurotransmitter chemicals of brain plays an important role in breastfeeding and all the things. Yeah. Just give me one second. I'll just. science uh actually i was not able to hear you properly stuti now are you able to hear me yeah you are fine uh, i'm audible yeah so tell me like yeah. uh, what made you interested in neuroscience uh see basically uh, everybody knows about what is going on in your body but whatever the things or whatever physiological processes that are happening in your body are mainly coordinated by your brain the brain is the master key to everything that is happening means for example uh, you have a mind you have a mindset there is a psychology but there is a important thing you have to understand behind every boy, uh, physiological process or behind every psychology there is an underlying biology and that is brain so that made me interested to study neuroscience okay so uh Abhishek, uh, like, uh, what made you interested in breastfeeding? Uh, the neuroscience of breastfeeding, because it's a very niche subject which not many people know uh, about. See, basically, uh, now uh, if you see uh, whatever it is trending in media with respect to science or health and nutrition, breastfeeding is an important topic. But uh, there are many speakers and there are many advocates regarding breastfeeding who talk about why it is important, why it is necessary, and all, how it is to be done. But no many, uh, basically, there are uh, very few people, or there are not many people who talk about what is the science behind it, or what is the role of brain behind it. Okay, so uh, tell us what is the role of brain behind breastfeeding. I am. Let me just tell at the onset. Okay. I am a breastfeeding mother of two kids. I have exclusively yeah. breastfed both my children till six months. One is six months old. We have just started solids for her, and I fed my uh, first one till he was twenty months old. Okay. And, and I weaned him. I mean, he self weaned because I was pregnant with the other one. So the composition of milk changed, and uh, he self weaned. But I would have continued for long. I am a promoter of extended breastfeeding. Yeah. So we'll talk about that also. What is the correct age, or till what age you should breastfeed your kids? Okay. So basically, uh, to start upon, uh, we'll understand uh, one uh, hormone. Actually, you can you can call it as a hormone. The name of that hormone is oxytocin. Okay. Now, uh, many women or many people have heard about oxytocin. Um, we call it as a love hormone. We called it as a milking hormone. We called it as a, a hormone that eases birthing process. We'll start from the basic of uh, how oxytocin physiologically works, and then we will come to oxytocin and breastfeeding, and then how it creates an attachment between mother and baby, how it creates a trust. So, uh, to tell you in a simple way, so uh, the oxytocin is a hormone that is stored in a gland that is called as pituitary gland in your brain, and uh, its release or when to release and why, how much to release is controlled by one of the other organ in your brain called as a hypothalamus. These are two simple things. now uh, how it uh, eases your birthing process is that whenever baby wants to come out of your uh, uh, cervical part so whenever baby baby stretches or moves in the cervical part the recept there are sensors on your cervical part basically on the myometrium the layer below the endometrium 
so they get activated and they tell the brain to release oxytocin so brain releases oxytocin and whenever that oxytocin comes to your uh, myometrium it creates the contractions and this contraction helps your baby to get out of from vagina so this okay. is how it helps in the uh, birthing process now the important thing is what is its role in breastfeeding okay see everybody knows that prolactin is a hormone that is responsible for production of milk in your breast but who makes the milk come out of your breast from nipple that is oxytocin now how the milk comes uh, come out of your nipple is that so uh, areolas will have a sensors so whenever baby will uh, suck the areolar part, nipples or it will uh, do the suckling process so this uh, sensors on your nipples get stimulated and they send a command to same part of your brain that is hypothalamus and this will release the oxytocin so whenever oxytocin will reach the breast what it will do uh, your milk ducts or the lobules in which milk is stored is surrounded by a tissue and that tissue have a myoepithelial cells okay, okay. so whenever this ox oxytocin will reach the tissue the, uh, that is surrounded in the basically lobules or that is that has encompasses the milk ducts so whenever oxytocin will come to your breast when baby sucks your nipple it will create the contraction in your muscles that okay. tissue and then by because of this contractions the milk will be pushed from the ducts through the nipple to the baby's mouth so this okay. is what we called as milk letdown reflex so these are two normal biological processes that uh, many people will be familiar with so these are the major roles now what is the shadow role of oxytocin the second name for the oxytocin is also love hormone cuddle hormone or the hormone of attachment now what happens see it is not only uh, the process of birthing or breastfeeding that will release the oxytocin in your, in your body or brain uh, whenever you feel good whenever you feel a pleasant touch basically the sensation of touch or any of the tactile motion the oxytocin is released in your body mm -hmm. so uh, how a trust is built or how emotion is processed in brain you have a system that is called as limbic system okay. or in simple word you have a circuitry in your brain that processes emotions okay now what happens there is a part in a brain that is called as amygdala it is not important to remember the word because they are very technical basically yeah. so there is a part in your brain called as amygdala that will process most of the fear and emotions every time what happens whenever you do breastfeeding okay so oxytocin so, is released to uh, basically uh, push forward the milk letdown reflex or to get the milk out from the breast to the baby's mouth but this oxytocin also is circulated across your brain so every time you breastfeed your baby the brain, this oxytocin will give you a calming effect in your brain as well as it is released in the baby's brain also okay so automatically this oxytocin will tell your emotion processing system that keep calm the person that is creating this sensation is your own and in this way the breastfeeding will release oxytocin and oxytocin will create a bond between you and your baby means basically your brain will mark your baby as the most trusted person in your brain and okay. vice versa baby's brain will mark mother's experience the physiological experience as the most safest experience in the world okay because we use the term loosely you know when we say that okay breastfeeding is bonding and people say okay i am formal yeah. feeding i am also bonding with my kid but now i know the reason behind why is it called as bonding and so uh, basically there is a generic term in english that breastfeeding is giving warmth it is actually a scientific process of creating a bonding between baby and you okay so so the baby gets to, i heard that uh, a breastfeeding baby will have better tastes because they can taste what the mother had not really taste taste but the composition of milk changes according to what the mother has right yeah uh, uh, so uh, we'll talk about the uh, composition of breast milk now uh, breast milk is not only a thing that will provide a baby with uh, nutrition okay one of the major component of breast milk is microbiome now microbiome is one of the hyped word these days okay many people talk about microbiome 
so what is basically microbiome microbiome is a colony of bacteria okay the beneficial bacteria and mostly found in gut so when a baby is born he doesn't have many of the gut col bacterial colonies in his uh, her gut the so, gut is not formed right properly like the gut yeah is it is not completely formed either and it doesn't have any bacterial colonies so this bacterial colonies are very important they play a major role in baby's immunity in growing the baby's immunity as well as keeping your immunity maintained throughout your life you need gut bacteria till you are alive yeah. so if you see the breast milk composition breast milk doesn't only have vitamins proteins or lactoferrins basically the energy component but it also has immunoglobulins that is the immune characteristic that will protect your baby from respiratory infections and stomach infection and it will also have 30% of milk will have the gut microbiome okay that will get into a baby's stomach and activates the the baby's uh, colony formation and important thing is that the composition of microbiome in the milk uh, breast milk is not only affected by your genetics or your anatomical body it is affected by the food you eat the clothes you wear the temperature or the climate you reside in and the stress factor you have and also okay. your body weight these five factors will contribute to the composition of the microbiome in the breast milk so you know we are often told that eat whatever you want after delivery it won't get into the baby the baby is not getting to eat uh, you know uh, get uh, the, it doesn't affect the breast milk is it true no see what happens uh, if you uh, see how breast milk is generated in the ducts so breast milk is produced by alveolar cells in the lobules that is the milk duct yeah. so the uh, whenever baby is sucking or there there is a release of a hormone from a brain we call it as a thyrotrophin releasing hormone that is prolactin when okay. prolactin gets into your breast it will go to your alveolar cell and it will create a chemical reaction which will take in all the components it has in the blood from uh, uh, your breast milk will contain immunoglobulins proteins vitamins sodium channels even cholesterol is present in your breast milk everything and so what you eat and your bodily composition will change or hamper the basic what we call as the composition of your milk okay that's really really interesting even the clothes yes. we wear yeah see basically what happens now breast sacking happens okay and women are very considerate about breast sagging so they wear nursing bras or many of the time the bras are not fitting very well so what happens and they the wear underwear, underwear also underwear. Uh, yeah yeah the what happens if you see the anatomical structure of your breast the uh, milk ducts are surrounded by connective tissue and this okay. tissue connective tissues hold your breast and connect it to your chest muscles that is uh, there is the name of muscle is pectoralis okay. what happens if you use uh, the underwire bras it will create a structural compression on the breast and there is a 25% chance that the ducts will get clogged or partially it will get clogged means there are multi see there are multiple lobules multiple lobules will have multiple ducts and they will come together to form a sinus a cavity and this cavity is connected to the tip of your nipple so if you compress from the bottom or from the side the ducts that are in the side of the wire will get compressed so new moms don't wear underwired bras or too tight bras if you are breastfeeding right yeah okay that is the science okay so that is what you meant by uh, the clothes you wear and the temperature and everything yeah all the things uh if you are now what happens many of the uh, now it is been advocated that if you have any infection don't take antibiotics immediately try to sustain the infection and if only you get a temperature for 3 days then go for uh, antibiotics and all the how much antibiotics you took before pregnancy during pregnancy and after pregnancy will directly inf uh, influence the co uh, composition of gut mic uh, the microbiomes in your milk and it is a proven research it is not What because some doctor has said or... also yeah 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 uh, now i'll tell you one thing there was a research made that effect of mode of delivery means whether you are a uh, natural you had a natural delivery vaginal or whether delivery, it was a it. yeah vaginal yeah 
vaginal delivery or it was a c section the mode of delivery defines the amount and number of gut microbiomes or number of positive microbiomes in your breast milk okay the vaginal uh, if your baby was born uh, because of vaginal delivery your breast milk will have lot of microbiomes and immune characteristics present that is not present in a mother who had a c section i had both c sections but i had breastfed both my kids till 6 uh, months uh, even i'll tell you uh, means there is a, a concept why uh, the kids who are born by, uh, with the c section don't have immunity mm -hmm. see i'll tell you why the c section babies don't have immunity or what is the problem with a c section see when uh, during the ninth month you must have experience you have lot of vaginal secretions happening during the mm -hmm. last month of your pregnancy yeah. so when baby is uh, getting birth or when baby is been delivered vaginally all the vaginal fluid will be wrapped around your baby's head lips now there are two bacteria present in vaginal discharge the, or vaginal secretion we call it as grandella and provitella now what happens when baby is born naturally and all the vaginal secretions when he's uh, been uh, getting out from vagina this secretions will touch his lips and it will go into the stomach and it will start or it will get the baby's gut into a first gear to start the production of this microbiomes now when a baby is born with c section there is no this uh, none of this process is happening that uh, provitella and all the vaginal discharge is been sucked or basically it is been touched by the lip so these babies are deprived by both of this bacteria means they don't get it so they will never silly. get i might sound silly but can't the gynex then take the secretion and apply it to the baby's uh, yeah there is a process see there is a process uh, 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 one of the best scientist i have heard about is dr tom o'brien if you read his research article there is a process you have to be a uh, take a q tip you have to dip the q tip in vagina and you have to make that q tip uh, suckle for the baby well, within baby. the first half within the first ha half hour of the birth but uh, many of the doctors in india skip this step i don't know why but nobody does this step it is the uh, basically if you are uh, giving a birth with the help of c section the doctor should use any of the q tip devices suck it into your vaginal fluid and make it suck by your baby so that he will get all the bacteria that is missing this is the for, is i have missing. done so i have done so much research on parenting and breastfeeding but this is the first time i'm hearing this and this is really yeah. really interesting you you can find it on the internet also uh, miss provitella yeah. and grandella bacteria and its effect on no, baby no that cute tip thing is very interesting but tell me one thing i'm being selfish here as a c section mom who has fed both kids uh, uh till 6 months exclusively will they have the same amount of immunity now uh Versus see the important thing is uh, see it is okay that you missed the first step in create uh, immunity creation process but it can be done on later on now first important thing is that when your baby see gut microbiome is dependent on how much diverse food you are eating okay first thing so make sure two things when your baby starts eating solid foods okay try to provide him with lot of local food which are seasonal okay local food which are seasonal and they should be diverse enough means every day the more diverse food he eats the more gut bacteria gets familiar with the diversity and there will be more regeneration of colonies i i day. do that i do that thankfully i do yeah. that <laughs> okay tell me one more thing let's we are off the topic we are told that when the baby not we are not told it was according to my research that when the baby is born this vernix uh -huh. over the baby the white layer right the vernix yeah don't give him bath for 24 hours him or her bath for 24 hours and let the vernix be absorbed by the baby because that layer that that, that layer has lot of things that can support the baby's sustainability throughout the life skin collagen tissue uh, and intracellular extracellular materials so it is so been told that. not to wipe up yeah so it is told not to wipe up anything yeah. so but not they don't do that you know in hospitals my baby was delivered in breech candy which is the even i'll tell you this hygiene process na basically they do it as a part of hygiene i'll tell you one part now when you are doing breastfeeding na 
uh, when the breastfeeding process is at the end, baby stops suckling, there is a lot of milk remaining on the nipples. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As a part of hygiene, we all wipe it off. No, we should okay, not. Every... I do not wipe it off. Huh. Yeah. You know why we shouldn't wipe wipe it off? No, I don't know. Tell See, me. See, I'll tell you. Now, there was a research done. Now, out of the thirty percent bacteria that is for uh, for uh, or basically the gut uh, the microbiome actually the correct word is microbiome that is present in the breast milk or present uh, that has been present in a baby which is which comes from breast milk actually. उसमें से 27 परसेंट कम्स फ्रॉम ब्रेस्ट मिल्क एंड 10 परसेंट कम्स फ्रॉम एरियोलाज ओके हाउ एरियोल द स्किन और द डार्क टिश्यूज ऑफ द एरियोला विल हैव लॉट ऑफ स्किन बैक्टीरिया विच आर पॉजिटिव बैक्टीरिया वेन सम ऑफ द मिल्क ड्राइज ऑन योर निपल्स दिस स्किन पॉजिटिव बैक्टीरिया रिएक्ट विद द मिल्क देन देर आर बैक्टीरिया प्रेजेंट ऑन बेबीज लिप्स एंड बेबीज सलाइवा and the bacteria this all bacteria bacteria on the nipple that strives on the dried milk bacteria on the baby's lip bacteria on baby saliva will combine together to give rest 10% of microbiome to the baby so i don't say don't maintain hygiene of your breast but make sure you don't wipe out completely let the microbiome grow you know what my gynec had told me not to wash the breasts and areolas with soap and water just water She said, "Don't use soap on the areola because it changes the uh, microbiomes." Yeah, that is the thing because ten percent of microbiomes come from sucking, and that yeah. is the difference between breastfeeding versus bottle feeding. What happens? Uh, See, you I'll tell. Pumping and giving. Pumping. pumping. And giving. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, pumping and giving. The difference. So guys, I'll tell you the difference. Here. Let me just simplify it for the moment. Yeah, yeah. So we are talking about the difference between. breastfeeding from the source that is breast from the breast and breastfeeding via the bottle that is pumped breast milk we are talking about the yeah. difference here yeah and i'll tell you two things what happens with the gut uh, the microbiomes and also tell you the women who feed their babies with the pump why don't they don't get easily out of postpartum depression okay okay i'll tell you two science behind the two neurosciences first thing what happens now i've told you it is very important for uh, formation or proper composition of gut microbiome that baby's lips should touch the areol part okay now if you pump your breast milk and feed them with the bottle this whole step is skipped the baby's lip the bacteria in the baby's lip bacteria on the areolal part and the saliva now if you remove these three parts where will be the 10% of microbiomes coming so it is not recommended to bottle feed the breast milk now second okay. thing uh, i'll tell you one thing you should remember is that when you are breast feeding now every uh, almost 99% of women will suffer from postpartum depression right everyone yeah, goes i also did yeah if it is natural process have you ever thought there must be some natural cure given by the nature through evolution there must be some natural cure breast feeding is the natural cure yeah. to come out of the postpartum depression how i'll tell you see two things happen when you are uh, uh, going from a pregnancy because of stress neural degradation happens lot of neurons dry because of stress okay and uh, the postpartum depression is also a thing now first thing whenever breast feeding is done and oxytocin raises in your brain it will provide the calming effect okay first thing second thing now prolactin is a hormone that produces milk in your breast but after milk production is done there, there should be some hormone to stop the production that hormone is dopamine okay. and you know dopamine is a hormone of pleasure it gives you pleasure in your brain so every time sufficient amount of milk production is done you get the satisfaction the satisfaction is because of dopamine is released to stop the prolactin and side by side this dopamine release every day release of dopamine in a bout will help you to get off the depression and third thing what about the loss of memory see you must have experienced one thing uh like 2 3 months before delivery and after one or two months of delivery you forget many things and after yeah. six months you get your memory back That how you get your memory brain. back in layman terms we called it mom's yeah. brain yeah how you get the mom's brain this oxytocin is a neurogenetic 
neurogenetic means it supports neurogenesis means every time oxytocin is there it will help your brain to regrow the lost neuron during the stress so after 6 months of breastfeeding you get your brain back so this is what okay. happens in your brain but people who formula feed they do not get their brains back see it uh, there are many ways it's not only oxytocin that triggers neurogenesis it is the exercise it is the food you eat there are many things but if you say the women who do breastfeeding easily get out of the postpartum depression and they get their brains back not as compared to the women who are uh, bottle feeding or giving the formulas okay even i'll tell you uh, many women uh, suffer i had discussion this discussion with my sister many women suffer from sudden uh, stoppage of milk okay sudden draining of milk okay there is a condition where breast milk suddenly stops or the uh, the process of production of milk suddenly stops okay. there is a condition uh, one in 50 women suffers from this okay. okay if there is no anatomical change or there is no anatomical problem what happens if your breast milk stops suddenly and it doesn't uh, work for like 7 days they lose the hope and they start moving on to the milk formulas so they shouldn't unless and until they diagnose it is not anatomical many of times there is a estrogen imbalance what happens estrogen you know est- what is estrogen it happens only when your period comes i know this See, that breast uh, why only- why yeah why you know why it happens estrogen is plays from both the sides how i'll tell you estrogen stimulates the production of prolactin okay which will help to produce more milk but in breast it stops or it inhibits the receptor where prolactin works means ek jagah pe wo prolactin trigger bhi karta hai par wo badhne ke baad wo breast mein use kaam bhi nahi karne deta isliye during your yeah so during your periods if sudden there is a bouts of this estrogen you will feel sudden a uh, drop in this level, uh, pro- Mil- there, there will be yeah, yeah. that's the only time yeah yeah why because you know breast milk is a demand and supply thing right so even if you have yeah. a dip if you keep feeding it will come back right like yeah. you were saying see there are many many knobs that have to be turned to start the whole process any of the knob is not working say prolactin pituitary gland hypothalamus your receptor the cycle will not complete and the production will not stop but your body is very dynamic body cures many of the things on its own so you have to wait and watch Okay. Can we take one question, Abhishek? Nick yeah. Agarwal, Nikita Agarwal is asking, what happens to kids who are formula fed with regard to gut bacteria? How does their gut bacteria form? See, their gut bacteria will not develop in equal amount as compared to the natural breast milk, because formula will have all the pro- vitamins. Okay, it will have carbohydrates, but where you will be adding gut natural bacteria in the formula? Mm-hmm. so for them there is a thing is that when your baby will stop uh this milk uh drink like after 6 months and he will come up to the solid things or he'll start eating the solid things try him to supplement with lot of fermented foods yogurts or basically any kind of Kanji. naturally kanji yeah. dosa anything fermented yeah anything we yeah yeah rice but, water cooked rice water which we uh, like you know in bengali they call it panta bhatia ha huh. Th- that all stuff will help to uh, see it may or see actually the composition of gut basically va- you disappeared i can't hear you abhishek for something <laughs> yeah yeah you are just back ha yeah. see gut by uh, m- microbiome is dependent on many things like your genetics and all and all but it is very uh, breast milk is very important in gut microbiome so if you are feeding your baby with the powder or milk formulas when he will be on the solid things try to supplement him with yogurt or fermented food even like after 2 uh, year or after 3 years there are uh, probiotics available for kid so and one important thing probiotics are not only for kids probiotics are also for mother so you could consult your doctor and ask for probiotics that suits you okay okay 
So uh, let's get into pheromones. So you wanted uh, we wanted to speak on pheromones and breastfeeding. What are pheromones? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we'll talk about pheromones, means pheromones and breastfeeding. Now pheromones is nothing but the smell coming out of your body or the odor coming out of your body. Now every sense has a processing area in the brain. Okay, every sense has a different processing area in the brain. The smell is the typical sense which has a dedicated processing area in the brain as compared to other senses now every part of your body has a sense okay smell now what happens when you are breastfeeding when your baby is younger than 1 year old if you must have experience his hair and scalp has a typical smell compared to the body baby's hair and scalp has a typical smell and you will not find that smell in other babies or not anybody in the family it is a typical smell now what is pheromones pheromones is basically a smell coming out of the body now mm-hmm. see the role of pheromone is to pass information in okay. some like few thousand years ago or few lakh years ago when human evolution was taking place pheromones used to pass lot of genetic information now okay. change in evolution and human body subsided it but today also many of the genetic information and many of the identification information is passed through pheromones so when you hold your baby close during the breastfeeding pheromones will release first thing from baby scalp and that will get into your brain through the nasal cavity and the area of the brain that processes this smell is called as olfactory bulb okay so automatically it will create olfactory? a identification olfactory bulb bulb okay. b u l b okay okay uh, and then it goes to a periform gyrus it's a processing area so automatically you your brain will tag your baby okay so even when you don't see your baby you can identify your baby with the smell this is the logic of pheromones and, so you know we are told okay. uh, according to my research which i have always done i have not applied any perfume till i'm breastfeeding because uh, yes you shouldn't that. apply that is that is the reason it will override the smell of pheromones yeah. see when you hold your baby in a typical position or breastfeeding position your armpits will have opocrine gland and sebaceous gland that will release pheromones the dark tissue on the breast will release the pheromones that will get into now baby's brain and baby's brain will mark you as his the mother, mother. Okay. Yeah. So even when baby is not taught who is his mother, he knows who is his mother because of this pheromone. He gets to know who is his mother. Smell and sound. They they know by yeah. their mother when they are born. Yeah. Smell, smell and sound. Okay. Means see, automatically uh, for three months if you are breastfeeding, on the fourth month if you give a breastfeeding or give your baby to some other woman to breastfeed, he will not drink the milk or he will not touch the breast because the smell is not familiar with his brain. Oh, it's lovely. identification pheromones are the identifications that's lovely how the brain functions and how the everything it's 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 a revelation and i'm so glad to know these facts thank you actually yeah. it's a fun to understand neuroscience it is quite a yeah. fun yeah because i never knew that why is it told that don't apply perfume they said maa ka smell chala jata hai but what is this maa ka smell i didn't know in neuroscience term you know what uh, i'll tell you one fun fact you know uh, i work on biology of love basically some of my research is on how we fall in love wow you when you meet someone even if you were talking to him on phone or chatting with him sometime it happens uh, in the millennial couples they were talking on phone chatting but once they meet their mind changes yeah the women's nose have a sensor that is called as mhc major histability complexes if the smell smell will tell the immune characteristics of boys if the okay. immune characteristics of boys is opposite than you the rule of evolution was to create a stronger immunity if it is opposite your brain will go ahead if it is, it is not your brain will suddenly change its mind i don't want this boy this is what oh. happens in the brain this is too good like because the immunity of the boy and the immunity of the girl is not uh, matching yeah because the ru- evolution ka rule bahut simple hai two cross immunities should come together to form a stronger new generation and the sensors are called mhc major histability complexes that's lovely that's lovely i wish we could go on and on about the session okay somebody wants to know pinto viona wants to know could you please talk about long term breastfeeding as well ha huh. now uh, uh, 
real till what age you should breastfeed your kids you know there I was a research made will, huh i don't there is I there was a re- can, first thing there is no age but at least till 2 years you should yeah. breastfeed your kids yes at least till second year completes why and ideally it is seen the more you breastfeed your kids the more intelligent they are there was a yes. research done yes i plan to go on till two months at uh, two years with my first one i had to stop four months before but tell us why is it why is it told to feed till two years at least see uh, basically uh, now i'll talk i'll not give you a detailed science because it will take a lot of time but important is uh, it's it's a neural correlation we call it as a neural core- correlation that happens in the long term breastfeeding that will help a baby's brain development as well as the body uh, physiological or pathophysiological development okay 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 so uh, let's take some question paridhi agarwal has a question uh please suggest what should mothers do whose babies are unable to latch she has written suck the nipple i think she means latch yeah i guess the meaning should be see, see you have to train it see basically suckling is a reflex people are born with the reflexes some of the basic reflexes people are born with okay but if the suckling is not possible you have to train your baby sometimes you need to train your baby and i'll tell you uh, you know one thing baby's brain has equal number of neurons or the brain cells that an adult brain has oh, and baby can train lot of means add up many things easily so you can train your baby sometimes that's wonderful this fondling fondling will help him to train yeah 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 that's why we are said that do skin to skin where you are topless and the baby is just in the diapers skin to skin give skin to skin yeah. and then and then let the baby play with your breast to uh let the milk come in okay yeah. so so even uh, i'll tell you one thing the composition breast milk will hamper the baby's weight also your weight as well as baby's weight breast feed babies are generally healthy enough and they will not get obese in the later life compared to the powdered milk yeah now is it see you- i'll tell you uh abhi jo yahan pe trend chalta hai na ki weight gain and weight loss other than calories and metabolic rate there is one more factor that defines whether you will be obese or you will be slim it is the gut microbiome we have two uh, colonies in our gut two types of bacteria one is called bacterites and one is called as firmicutes if bacterites are greater than firmicutes you will be on the obese side if firmicutes are in more number than bacterites you will be on always on a thinner side of your body weight any way to you know ingest that other thing nothing that nothing can be done <laughs> nothing can be done yeah because i would have done that anyway so uh, <laughs> nothing you know, can be done uh, a formula feeding mom nikagarwal is asking formula fed babies don't bond with their mothers because you said that breast milk see uh it is the primary bonding may not happen but sleeping with the baby skin to skin touch exchange of pheromones will also create the same effect intensity may be subsided but the effect will be created okay and uh, i am karina mg is asking what about the medicines available to increase supply see i don't uh, understand ma- 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 uh, uh, there are see some people uh, some women uh, suffer from low breast milk production okay, okay. Mm-hmm. so many medicines are there this medicines are basically uh, prolactin triggering medicines they are sometimes oxytocin triggering medicines they are sometimes uh, the prokinetic things they are sometimes lactic galactoglog lactic galactoglog means the medicines that will improve the milk production so this medicines trigger the production of breast milk but you know they are uh, counterproductive because they are otcs like me, sub, somebody like me who has an oversupply if we when the milk didn't come in in the first two days if i had it it would just lead to more milk and the baby will uh, fuss at the breast because See, basically <laughs> don't rush in anything the important thing is wait and see what happens in few days many okay. of the time what happens if nothing is been done in one or two days so your baby is too small like a few months it is okay they rush to a doctor immediately when he is partially on the breast milk and partially been feeded you can wait and watch what is happening and then you should decide whether to go for otcs or not okay 
so do you think that even a little breast milk is better than no breast milk like a mother who's uh, formula feeding even obviously if you yeah obviously Miss, even if it's not that, 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 that's there is very simple thing nothing uh, something is better than nothing okay okay There's so uh, something is better than nothing abhishek last two questions uh, i don't know if it is your expertise but what do you think about uh, delayed cord clamping of all the stem cells going to the baby does it also have uh, some neurological connections uh it is not only about neurological now i can't ta- uh, talk in very detail because uh it's a big thing it's much about epigenetics okay uh, if you have heard the word uh, have you heard the word epigenetics no your genes are present and uh, in simple way about the genes there are switches which turn off specific genes or turn on specific genes that is called as epigenetics means i'll give you a easy example same dna is present in every cell of your body but your cheek cell will behave differently and your lip cell will behave differently even the same dna so there, there are on off switches and this on on switches will tell your cell how to behave and what not to behave okay. so I this am, is I called am, as epigenetics rocks, i think <laughs> yeah okay. so can i answer a few questions being a breastfeeding mom yeah 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 baby yeah. janam's mom is asking is it true that a breastfed baby gains weight slowly as compared to the formula fed baby i want to say that the breastfed baby gains the optimal weight formula fed babies can be obese and you should not be worrying about the baby's weight when they are being breastfed exclusively breastfed because they are getting all their nutrition from the milk ruchita dhanesh dhanresh is asking is it okay to let the baby suck and sleep absolutely my babies have always sucked and slept and still do sharmisha is asking what should be the mother's diet during breastfeeding like what your family has nothing extra nothing uh, you should not have in any uh, i want to add one thing in this yeah stop eating sugar sugar is the real culprit okay across your body i'll tell you one thing your body will never require any kind of sugar throughout your life throughout your bod- life body never need sugar body needs carbohydrates okay make sure to sugar is a different thing sugar is a white death salt and sugar is a white death okay and genetically if we do any other session i'll tell you how genetically sugar kills you every Let's day do one sugar more is session. what say yeah. people just write yes if you want one more session on how does sugar kill you basically sugar is the real culprit uh, miss i can tell you biologically physiologically neurologically genetically on every phases how sugar works so okay. when you are breast feeding so remember two things don't try to give sugar feed products to your babies as well and don't you shouldn't eat sugar when you are breast feeding it will change lot of things in your physiology Okay. Okay. I see. Fruits are very different than sugar. Fruits are always welcomed. Honey? Do you consider honey and jaggery also as sugar? No, no, no. I'm not talking about honey and jaggery. They are fine, right? Yeah, they are fine. As see, as compared to sugar, fifty percent honey is very good. Okay. 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 But make so your honey. Yeah, yeah. Sugar. Anjali from Just Random Mom Things is asking, what about microbiomes in donated breast milk? does donated breast milk also have microbiomes and how will it affect the baby's gut see microbiome will be present in every breast milk first thing second thing make sure the uh, women who is donating the breast milk is eating a uh, nutritious food and living in the stress free environment okay big so the composition should be uh, will be optimal in, enough and generally if the, see if the uh, breast milk or composition of the microbiome is not matching baby will show the reactions if baby is not showing any reaction then it is matching the baby's gut abhishek why is it that when i'm stressed and i'm feeding my baby the baby is very fussy and irritable and everything if i'm stressed and if i'm breastfeeding how does the baby know i'm stressed because the baby gets very uh, actually uh, the answer is very big because there is there are five hormones involved it's norepinephrine cortisol oxytocin dopamine and serotonin so it is better we skip this thing because it's a big cycle how it happens can you tell us in short that will it affect the baby if the mother is stressed yes 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 the stress affects everything stress and sugar affects everything okay 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 so uh, we didn't uh, just a second what to give to patients in vertigo ppt usually give nimbu pani which usually consists of sugar uh, can you please elaborate the co- questions what type of vertigo she yeah. wants to listen vertigo has multiple dimensions in the neurobiology and p 
PPT usually give what can she elaborate the question yeah please sharmisha if you can elaborate the question so uh, let's talk about the vernix is vernix okay okay i got i got i got i got i got uh, what was her question see vertigo is not necessarily happening because of low sugar or a hypoglycemia to give the nimbo pani with sugar first thing uh, the first line of treatment when you face from hypoglycemia or vertigo people give you ors oral rehydration salts okay to uh, cop up your blood glucose but actually it should be a fruit juice which is supplemented with the nimbo pani with the sugar Okay. nimbu pani with the sugar will drown the patient more after few hours as compared to the fruit juices okay, uh, okay. It's a, it's, it was completely medical thing <laughs> okay so pinto viona is asking does it have physiological and emotional effects on baby if we wean them after 2 years she means i mean when the baby is weaned do they have physiological and emotional baby will never know they are been weaned off they don't even come to know they are weaned off only they know one thing they had a habit and now they don't have a habit mm-hmm. okay whatever and- effects you will see they are anatomical and biological they are not the physiological or psychological when you wean off got it got it got it so nika agarwal is again asking if you talked about intelligence for breastfed babies won't formula fed babies be intelligent see it is just a factor i am not saying it is a complete factor see intelligence is not about see there are two things remember throughout your life one is nature and other is nurture nature is what your biology is and nurture is how you train your biology to cope up with the real thing if you miss the biology don't miss out to your n- nurture even though your baby is not having nature try to give him the nurture he will be at the same level of the, or he may go ahead of the people who have even good nature born with the good nature or good so biology because of all it's not a problem we know we have talked about it if you could not have breastfed you don't you are not behind see 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 go. nurture can change your babies completely i'll tell you an example how the nurture and nature depends it nurture and nature is part of genetics from genetics is affect some people are very intelligent in school and you will not see their names after school life anywhere in the books some people were not in the limelight anywhere till they went to college and after that suddenly they pop up from everywhere that is the difference between nature and nurture yeah ha huh. genetically there is some restrictions to how much you can expand your brain and i'll tell you one thing as a i am neuroscientist i'll tell you you can your you can grow your brain daily you can grow your brain till the age of 94 daily if you treat your brain right you can grow 700 neurons and that how is what we called as right? we will do one complete session on how to grow your brain <laughs> okay. because if you treat your brain right you can grow 700 cells a day and the neurogenesis or growing of neuron happens in hippocampus the area responsible for creating memories and learning okay okay so anjali from just random mom things is asking is there a correlation between extended breastfeeding and potential allergies in babies or when they grow up see uh you can't justify it as answer it depends it it is allergies are completely person to person dependent it is not anything that can be classified as a generic okay means okay. one one may have one may not have and you can't even prove it on the scale okay sharmisha is asking if baby's milestone milestone achievement will be affected anyway when the baby is fed formula fed versus breast fed will there be difference in achievement of milestone see uh, that is what i told right now nature and nurture nature. nature and nurture if you miss out on nature means if you miss out on breast milk or biology try to supplement it with the nurture or external things or environmental things that can complement or compensate the nature okay so uh, abhishek can we come back to vernix i'm really interested vernix does vernix have microbiomes which is absorbed by the baby if you leave it on for like 24 hours and don't pipe off the baby mm it depends actually what is your skin bacterial composition it is based upon that mm-hmm. and uh, also how much is the humidity and all this factor also core come into the play when it comes to the bacterial composition on the vernix okay because you know vernix is something the baby is born with and it says that the more they absorb the better it is <laughs> well, yeah it is okay 
okay so abhishek i think it was a, a wonderful session do you have anything else to say something we missed out on no so basically we have covered most of the thing that could be understood by common people yeah so huh. hope people get alerted about risk trading and neuroscience this was a really interesting session you know i have had uh, i have read up so much on risk trading because i'm interested in the topic and i know a lot of facts but i did not know the science behind it and uh, now i'm enlightened that it's such a uh, you know uh, what i i feel enlightened i can just say that <laughs> see as a uh, researcher it gives us happiness basically for me also to spread the knowledge because the knowledge when it is spread then only it creates more brainstorming to us also ki what we are missing so, out so abhishek let's do one more session on how sugar kills and maybe we'll come yeah, to we'll other yeah yeah sure sure we'll do on yeah, why sugar is a killer thank yeah, yeah, you sure, so much sure. abhishek and if you guys have any more questions you can reach out, reach him out to, on his handle uh, can you tell your handle here abhishek so that they can oh uh, yeah it is Or abhishek yeah uh yeah see uh, you can reach out on my handle it's a b h i s h e k abhishek g d h a w a n abhishek g dhawan that's my handle and find health www.findhealth.in is my website so you guys can reach and ask question i am for sure abhishek going to ask you a lot of questions and uh... oh my god So tell us about your TEDx. Let's finish by telling us about when was your when when did you? Uh, actually, I'm a two times TEDx speaker. Uh, my first topic was curing the incurable, how okay. you can cure the incurable chronic diseases, and the second TEDx talk was on uh, problems with the lifestyle. That is uh, why people exercise every day, go for walk every day for hour, and still they are same as it is. Uh, that is what we call as non-exercisable activity thermogenesis. This Please tell us about it. Do we do we need another session for this? Yeah, it's a complete session. It's why you exercise, you do everything, and still you are as it is. Abhishek, we should have weekly sessions. Every week, I'll call you here, and we'll discuss a topic. Yeah, sure, sure. We'll surely do one more session. Thank you so much, people. It was lovely having you, and thank you, Abhishek. It was a really yeah, great session. It was thank great you. actually talking to you. Yeah, so, bye, same bye. here. Bye. Yeah, bye.